The Britannic, likely the most underrated ship of the Olympic class. Britannic is like that one cousin you never or even hardly even talk about. So what makes Britannic so special? Well, basically nothing. That's a joke by the way. Britannic was constructed in 1914 and is or was a feat of engineering. Britannic's construction began at 1914 and finished at 1915. Fun fact, when Britannic was quote unquote finished, she wasn't actually finished since she was missing a few additional features but we'll get into that later. She had an extensive safety modifications throughout her hull and deck like a double bottom or a second hull and even these new crazy tall lifeboat davits or gantry davits. These gantry davits can hold three lifeboats each. To give you a sense of scale of how massive these gantry davits are, here's a drawing of one of Britannic's gantry davits beside a nurse or passenger. So basically, Harlan and Wolf did this to Britannic. Take whatever upgrades and modifications Olympic and Titanic had and do a lot more of it. A few additional features were also added, like how the poop deck is now connected to sea deck and there is no longer that dip between the superstructure and the poop deck, which is neat. When she was eventually launched in 1914, War was just on the horizon. Now, usually on the fitting out process section, I usually breeze over, but I had to add this in. Britannic was the only ship in the Olympic class ever filmed on deck during the fitting out process, which is cool. She also had a new steam turbine engine installed for the center propeller, effectively making her a knot or so faster than Olympic or Titanic. When the fitting out and construction was quote unquote finished, she wasn't really actually finished, only partly finished. Only seven of the eight giant gantry davits were only installed on the ship. Due to this, Britannic's bulwark had to be completely removed. And in their place, additional lifeboats were installed. So the amount of lifeboats Britannic should carry would be on the ship. Fun fact. Britannic was the only sh ship to never become the world's biggest ocean liner in the Olympic class. Once all fittings were installed or not installed, Britannic was quickly requisitioned as a hospital ship due to the dumpster fire also known as the Gullipilly campaign. And suddenly, there was a massive demand of hospital ships. Britannic was painted white with the distinct big red crosses on her side. In addition to these sweeping changes, a long green stream of light across B deck was installed. When she finally sailed off, she first made a stop over Naples before continuing to Mudrose to get her stock of coal replenished. After that, she was anchored off the Isle of Wight and stayed there for four weeks as a floating hospital. I may have breeze over this section as the video is exceedingly becoming longer and time consuming. But Britannic did have some brief contact with her sister ship, the Olympic, before she was docked for four weeks. Anyways, after three voyages, she was recalled back to White Star to be finally completed. Might want to take a guess what happened next. She proceeded to travel to the Dardanelles to assist onto the Gallipoli campaign again. She then returned to Naples and then to Britain. She basically did this two more times up to her final voyage. At November of 1916, she was ordered to head to the island of Limos in Greece. She passed through the Strait of Gibraltar and headed back again to Naples, the Detroit of Italy if you haven't guessed yet. She was recalled again and restocked and after a brief mishap with a storm, she rounded the Strait of Manessa and made it to the Aegean Sea on the 20th. In the early hours of the 21st, a loud BANG was heard on the starboard side of the ship. The captain of the ship, Charles Bartlett, realized the gravity of the situation and ordered the watertight doors closed. The captain kept the engines on at the time because he was still hoping to beach the ship. At the exact same time, the crew started lowering lifeboats full of people into the water against the will and orders of the captain. 
This had serious consequences. The still rotating propellers ended up blending the lowered lifeboats. Now, remember when I said the captain was trying to beach the ship? Well, that was all in vain as instead of making more passengers survive the sinking, it did the exact opposite. The engines were eventually turned off so the lowering of the lifeboats could fully begin. Though as lower in the water the ship got, the more she seemed to list. This would be a problem for any other type of ship without gantry davits. But Britannic wasn't any other boat, since Britannic had giant gantry davits. Or another name for them is lifeboat crane. The large size allowed the crew to launch the lifeboats even at an awkward angle. Once everyone was off except for the captain and the engineers, the captain of the Britannic blew the whistle of the ship three times. Each one was a long blast. The engineers proceeded to head up deck and evacuate. At the end of it all, Britannic sank only at 55 minutes, but how could this be? Well, due to how hot the climate was, a lot of nurses and passengers opened most of Britannic's portholes, allowing the water to bypass all safe modifications Britannic had, effectively rendering it useless. At the end, the total amount of people who died during the sinking was around 35 though other sources say it's 30. There were a lot more survivors this time around thanks to the warm Mediterranean waters. And that is the story and legend of the HMHS Britannic.